The Sri Lankan government is claiming victory as its army is engaged in last stand battles with the Tamil Tigers. Just what's behind this swift development in Asia's longest civil war? Is it really the end? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Sahil Rahman. Sri Lanka could be on the brink of all-out civil war. Some analysts are predicting that as the country's military attempts a final assault on Tamil Tiger fighters in the north, the rebels could come back with even greater determination. The Tamil Tigers formed 30 years ago after tensions flared between the minority Tamil population and the Sinhalese majority. The Tigers have been fighting against the government since the early 1980s, despite various efforts to broker ceasefires and peace agreements. In the latest offensive, the government claims to have all but destroyed the rebel factions. From Sri Lanka, Tony Bertley reports. Well armed and confident, a string of successes behind them, Sri Lankan soldiers are pushing deeper into Tamil Tiger-held territory. It's this kind of fighting which the army says has all but defeated the rebels. These are the latest pictures of the operation which led to the capture of the town of Mulativu, the Tigers' last major stronghold. Local TV captured the euphoria. For many Sri Lankans, it was almost as if the war had suddenly ended. The news that Mulativu had been taken by government troops brought a wave of celebration to the streets of Colombo. On the verge of the rebel-held town falling, people had cheered and fated President Mahinda Rajapaksa as a hero when he addressed a crowd but it was left to the army commander, General Von Seca, to announce the victory. He said that the success of the army offensive has left the Tamil Tigers 95% beaten. Close to Mulativu, abandoned vehicles were left by the side of the road by an apparently fast-retreating Tamil Tiger force. Others stuck in water from a dam. The Tigers blew up to slow the army advance, but it didn't work. It took only a few hours to take the town, but the fighting was said to have been heavy. There is no word yet on casualties on either side. The town was the headquarters of the Tigers' leader, Vilipalai Prabhakaran, but he wasn't found. The army was said Monday to be mopping up pockets of resistance. The main Tigers' force is said to have retreated and they now control an area of less than 300 square kilometres, a large part of it jungle. But with the military success, the crisis for more than 250,000 desperate Tamil civilians trapped in the pocket is growing. Hemmed into an ever-shrinking area, they are becoming more vulnerable as the fighting intensifies. The army says it has taken every measure possible to avoid civilian casualties and has allowed a 35-square-kilometre no-fire zone. But these pictures, purportedly from that zone, show that innocent people are still being caught in shelling. In this video sent to Al Jazeera, Tamil say this was filmed at Udayaku Junction at Suntantirapuram on the A35 main road on Saturday. They claim it was within the no-fire zone. You can see and hear panic after a shell explodes nearby. The cameraman claims six civilians were killed and 30 were injured, including three children. The wounded were taken by any means of transport to hospital and there seems no let-up in their suffering. There is no independent means of verifying either Tamil or government claims as journalists are barred from the conflict zone. Now you have this concentration of so many people in a small area with so many guns that it's, it's really something to be uh, very worried about and it is critical. The civilians are said to be short of food and medical supplies and until the fighting ends more will probably be killed and wounded. It's now looking ominous for the Tamil Tigers. They're clearly on the run with the army in hot pursuit. They're now in the thick jungles around Mulativu, and from here they could launch a guerrilla campaign depending on their capability. And some say that's when they're at their most dangerous. Tony Bertley, Al Jazeera, Colombo. Joining me now are my guests in Colombo, Anath Palakidna. He's the deputy editor of the news at the Sunday Observer. In Washington, D.C., Patrick Mendes from the Osgood Center for International Studies. He was also a professor for the U.S. State Department and the NATO and Pacific Commands. And in Toronto, Cheren Rutramuti, he's an assistant professor at the Department of Sociology and Anthropology at the University of Windsor. Uh, Patrick Mendes, so I come to you first. How seriously can we take the statements of defeat by the Sri Lankan military of the Tamil Tiger rebels? This conflict going on so many years, uh, more than 30 years, I think uh, they had up and down in the past. I think this is the end of the conflict. I hope 
by looking at the, all the evidence that reported in the media. So you tend to think it's quite serious then, and it is perhaps a, a, a final blow for the LTT? I think so, because the government is very committed to end this terrorism in the country that was uh, unfortunately killed their own people. I think this is the end of that legacy. Anav Palakadna in Colombo, uh, you're part of the Sunday Observer. It, it's run by the state itself, but would you agree with that assessment? I mean, you're reporting what's going on in the north of your country. What's your take on the whole situation? Well, what I can say is that uh, now it's a very, <clears throat> from the humanitarian point of view, that uh, a lot of people are trapped in the war zone. There's more than 100,000 people. So I could very well say they are something like uh, in between the devil and the deep blue sea. So they are trapped. Those are the humanitarian problem is the uh, now the major concern of the government. So now the government is appealing to all, um, even to, they have appealed earlier to the LTT also to release those innocent civilians to come into the safe areas and don't make them as the human shield. So even the, some uh, international community has also appealed, even a very recent appeal from the Bishop of Jaffna, Catholic Bishop of Jaffna, Dr. S uh, Thomas Wright, Reverend uh, Thomas Saundernayam, he has told that, um, that civ uh, civilians should not be affected in this war and they should be allowed to come to the um, safer zones. So now we are concerned about the um, safety of the civilians. On the other hand, the war is uh, continuing. So uh, we don't know the exact uh, the pattern of the war, what is really going on, but uh, according to the defense sources, we can uh, very well see that uh, so the armed forces are programmed uh, deep into the uh, Tiger territory and they are gaining some uh, very uh, important victories. Uh, so that is the situation uh, in Sri Lanka. There now. are many statements, most of them coming from the military and of course you're reporting them in your newspaper but as far as your journalists are concerned, how far, or how close are they to the fighting to be able to report accurately because there's very few independent corroborated reports uh, of journalists there who can actually tell us what's going on on the ground well we are uh, well we are from uh, we are getting most of the news from the uh, defense uh, media sources and apart from that we are uh, getting the news from the uh, civil administrative officials from those uh, particular areas and we are also getting the news from the people who have uh, come to the save us on from the um, battle uh, hardened areas you know the people who have mm. escaped from the battle zone they have now come to the save us on you know so they are narrating the tragedy and the agony they went at uh, underwent and all sort of things so we are getting the details from them so they are giving us the right picture what is really going on in the war zone so some of these people have been now put up in uh, centers where it is have been specially created for the internally displaced people in the uh, Waunia that okay. is a border area in the north let me just so bring in let, from let, let me bring in we, let me bring in dr uh, rudra moti there in toronto it's difficult to know what is fact uh, and what can be confirmed so how much of it is fact and how much of it is propaganda? How are you assessing the situation from where you are? Well, um, uh, I think the, the government of Sri Lanka has a very significant advantage in terms of territory in the conflict right now, and that is a fact. But then uh, the another fact is that you know we we seem to have a, a myopic view of the entire conflict. For example, in 1979, July 15th, the then government and the then president, J.R. Javadana, has uh, sent a very um, senior general uh, called Bull Vira Thinker to crush terrorism. And he went there, then he killed our, uh, you know, hundreds, uh, hundreds of people, civilians, and then he reported that the terrorism has been wiped out. So everyone thought that was the end of so-called terrorism. And then again in 1987, when the Indian government was there, they have, uh, they, they said, you know, the LTT is finished. But, you know, LTT did not, you know, they could not and did not crash the LTT. The, the problem here is that the, the, the problem of uh, uh, discourse of terrorism, the, the issue there, is the fundamental rights and human rights and the issue of minor, minority rights of the Tamils. It has never been addressed by any single uh, successive Sri Lankan government. As long as the problem remains, this conflict is going to go on. And then the, the idea that you know, it will be easy or it will be uh, possible to militarily defeat this con uh, the, the, the fundamental issue of the fundamental right, it is completely erroneous. So in that context, so this um, writing an obituary for the LTT or thinking that the war is going to be over is a kind of, you know, uh, to, to put, uh, to use uh, 
uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa's word. It's a kind of a daydream. It's a different kind of a daydream. Well, how important is it to, to uh, win the propaganda war and, and certainly perhaps change opinion in the north of the country? That It's obviously the, the military and the government being able to get their message across. We're hearing very little on camera or even from radio uh, interviews with the LTT. So it seems that there is some sort of uh, government stranglehold on all of that, Mr. Uh, Rutramuti. Well, I mean, yeah, this is this. I mean, you need to, you need to. I mean, I need to point out the fact that this is the most brutal and the uh, and the most uh, the racist regime we have ever seen in that country. And secondly, this is the this is the regime that has completely, completely, uh, strangled the entire voice of the media. You know, number of journalists have been killed. You know, at least 20, 20 journalists have been killed in the past three years, and then lots of them have been in exile. And there is not a single international reporter. For that matter, local reporter reporting from the conflict zone. This is the, this is the one and only war over the entire uh, conflict in the entire world where no aid agencies, no media is reporting. Well, we'll ask our guests just to respond to those comments from Toronto straight after the break, because when we come back, would a victory over the Tamil Tigers have any political implications in Sri Lanka? Do stay with us here on Inside Story.